Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I will explain a paper deep clustering with convolutional autoencoder. So this particular paper uh, was published in 2017 by Xin Feng Yun, Xing Wang Ling, and Xu Un Jin Ben Ying. Sorry if I have pronounced your name wrong. Uh, the main goal of this particular presentation is not to go much into detail like mathematical steps and all, but just give you the intuition that how it is superior than other methods. Okay, so yeah, without further ado, let's start with that. So this is the outline. First, I will give the motivation. Then I will create the background before understanding this, this paper. Then I will explain unsupervised deep embedded clustering analysis because uh, this particular paper is improvised version of this paper. So that's why I will also give you uh, introduction, explain this particular algorithm as well. And then I will explain deep clustering with convolutional autoencoder and then I will uh, explain its application in multiomics. Okay, so first motivation. Uh, the main motivation of this particular paper is to see that what type of neural network are proper for feature extraction because we know that okay we have different kind of neural network for example auto encoder it's also one kind of neural network. So whether we should use autoencoder, stacked autoencoder, variational autoencoder, what kind of autoencoder should we use for this particular task and which property should be preserved in feature space and simultaneously we will optimize reconstruction loss and clustering loss. So we will optimize both, both loss simultaneously. Okay, so yeah, and now let's, uh, now I will give you the background of this particular uh, paper. So it has two main uh, topics, dimensionality reduction and unsupervised clustering algorithm. In dimensionality reduction, I will explain PCA and autoencoder and then we will also see the different kind of autoencoder. In an unsupervised clustering algorithm, we will see k-min clustering and Gaussian mixture model. K-min clustering is hard assignment and Gaussian mixture model is soft assignment. We, uh, in coming slides, I will explain what is the difference between these two methods. Okay. Okay, so dimensionality reduction. So why uh, we do dimensionality reduction to represent, for example, if I want to represent, to compress the data, okay? And here, minimizing the mean square error and maximizing the variance, both these two method, it leads to the same algorithm, PCA. And its weight vector will be orthogonal to each other. Okay, now let's play this video. Yeah, so at this particular point, we can see that uh, we have uh, we have minimized the mean square error at this particular line and we have maximum variance okay so for example this is all 2d plot and for example if I want to convert into 1d then I will take this particular direction okay and the second direction will be orthogonal to each other which means this one this this black line limitation of this particular algorithm that uh, data lies in linear manifold in high dimensional space so only for that we can use not for a non-linear manifold and for that for non-linear manifold we use autoencoder so for example uh, if i implement pc and autoencoder for linear manifold then i will get the same result and for autoencoder vector a uh, weight vector may not be orthogonal to each other okay and now let's see the basic structure of autoencoder so this is the basic structure of autoencoder and we try to uh, maintain for example we we, uh, we try to do that over this x and x h be the same and this dimensionality detection step it's called encoder and here we increase the dimensionality we, it's we call decoder and this is the bottleneck and, we, and this is called reconstruction loss that for example what is the difference between x and x hat it's called reconstruction loss okay so this is simple autoencoder where we, where we train all the layer of autoencoder simultaneously but, but there are also some different versions so we first we will understand what is staked autoencoder so in staked autoencoder we train each layer individually so for example here first we train z1 layer so this will be our uh, our input x we train z1 layer and our output should be the same so same as uh, input so x hat okay so once our this particular layer is trained we throw this decoder part 
and then we train our Z2, the second layer. Yeah, so, and our input will be the uh, input from Z1. We fix this one. And we keep doing it for our complete encoder for our, all the layers and then we stack on each other, right? And to train this particular algorithm, we need really long time because as we could see that, okay, all the time we, we are training each layer individually. So that's why we need really long time and we need more hyperparameters to train. The third type of uh, autoencoder is variation autoencoder. Auto so here we don't have fixed weights for this bottleneck, but we have the mean and variance. So we sample from this particular model. We do not have fixed weights, but we sample from it, yeah, right? We uh, calculate our mean and variance, then we sample from it. And this is convolutional autoencoder. This is in the proposed approach. And here we use 3D image instead of the vectorizing the image, we use 3D image and then we convolutionally, we reduce the dimension and this 10 bottleneck because yeah, this is the MNIST and we have 10 digits. So that's why we have 10 units in bottleneck. And I have used, I took the same model from author and I have regenerated the result. And here we can see that, uh, X and the difference between X and X hat, it's almost, it's it's same. I mean, you see here it's three and my output from my autoencoder, it's it's very same, very similar. But it's also very interesting to see here that I have trained my model only for 20 epochs, which means that I have trained my model only for 167 seconds on Google Colab with GPU. So yeah, given the fact that I have trained for 167 seconds and yeah, we are getting really nice result. I have gone even one step further. I have thrown away the decoder part. I compressed it to 10 D, uh, 10 D dimension, and then I have plotted this particular vector in, into, uh, yeah, I have reduced it to 10 SNE, T SNE 2D, and this is the plot. And here already we can see that only within 167 seconds, we can, on, uh, we can already see some nice result. I mean, this cluster are actually here mixing up, but given the fact that I have trained this particular model only for 167 seconds, it's not bad. Now, uh, k-min clustering algorithm. In k-min clustering algorithm, this, this is the hard assignment. And here we see that what we do that, okay, we, we keep taking the mean of the, for example, we said, okay, this particular point, it belongs to this cluster. And then we keep taking the mean and eventually it will converge to global minimum, right? But in k-min, we have the problem. Uh, it's very sensitive to our initial guess and it may converge to local optimum and here you can see that okay here as our initial guess was yeah we are wrong so yeah here we can see that okay it's it's very sensitive to our initial guess anyways and now we will move forward to EM algorithm. So it is, it's called expectation maximization algorithm. In this particular algorithm, we do not do the hard assignment like previous one. We do not give that, okay, this particular point, it 100% belong to one particular cluster, but we give the probability. That for example, 50% belongs to this cluster, 50% to another, and then we try to converge our result. What is this algorithm? We try to maximize our expected log likelihood. Okay, and then we try to, yeah, we, then we optimize this parameter and then, yeah, when our model converts, then we stop. And this is eventually better than our k-min. This is not so much sensitive to uh, initial guess. Now we are ready to understand the first model, which is unsupervised deep embedded uh, for clustering analysis. This particular model was state-of-the-art model in 2016. Uh, which is written by a researcher in University of Washington and Facebook AI and the proposed approach is improvisation of this particular model and that's why I am explaining this particular model. And DEC because if you read the paper you or you everywhere you will see DEC so you may get confused that what is DEC so yeah so this is for your reference. Okay, so what they do, first of all, they pre-train their autoencoder. Here they use state autoencoder. They pre-train their model. Once their model is trained, then they do initial guess with k-min clustering and they fine tune their model uh, with clustering layer. So this clustering loss, it's this, uh, this is EM algorithm. This is, this is so soft assignment, 
okay and they fine tune their model only based on this particular clustering layer and here we can see that uh, this particular method it's already showing us like base result among all uh, these three methods for different data sets yeah now let's move forward and now we can understand deep clustering with conventional transcoder now author they are saying that okay first of all first change in previous algorithm from uh, so here they pre-trained their auto encoder as well but instead of using the staked auto encoder so i explained that what is staked auto, auto encoder and we all i also show you that it really takes long time to uh, train auto encoder so instead of using the auto encoder they use a convolutional auto encoder so once their uh, auto encoder is trained they initialize their uh, cluster center with k-mean and they fine tune their model based on this clustering layer loss as well as reconstruction loss. So they don't throw away this particular layer. They don't throw away decoder one. They keep the decoder and then they uh, try to improve both, both losses because here they are saying that, okay, if you throw this away, then you change this particular weights here, which are the feature weights, bottleneck weights, and it may give you the bad results so here instead of uh, so two changes first one they are, that they are not using state auto encoder they are using convolutional auto encoder second change they are fine tuning their model with uh, cluster layer and as well as reconstruction loss so, so they use both and here are the result here they have compared the result with several different method here dec means as we know that deep embedded clustering sec it's spectral embedded clustering sae is stacked auto encoder and ca is the commercial auto encoder right so here we, uh, they have uh, they have compared their model with different methods and for different data sets and if we, are, we can see that okay it's 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 providing better results as compared to others and if we plot it uh, on 2d then we can already we can see that okay we are getting actually very uh, good clustering i mean it's well separated from each other okay here we still have uh, 12 percentage error here but yeah i mean it's it's better than others and the clusters are well separated okay so in this particular paper i don't have any critics because here author they are, he is saying that okay uh, this approach is better than first one he is not uh, going for a state of the art model of uh, he is not claiming some high standard but he is just saying that this particular approach is better than other now let's see its application in multi -omics. So in autoencoder, we know that okay, we use we can use autoencoder to extract the subgroup of patient. And in this particular and now the next paper, uh, what I will uh, discuss is that that uh, this particular paper, what we saw that conventional autoencoder, we can also use it to for to get the relation among protein and metabolics during cardiac remodeling in unsupervised manner. So what is cardiac remodeling, I mean cardiac disease, so uh, all the heart related disease, right? So it's a cardiac disease and here they want to investigate the, uh, they train their model unsupervised way and see that how many correlations they can find, right? Okay, so let's first understand the method that uh, what's their approach. So what they did, they, they took eight different kind of mice. They took the sample of protein and metabolites and uh, they uh, normalize their data right so yeah how, how we normalize our normal data they, they have normalized their data and their information they fed into three different algorithm okay three different blocks here first they use k-mean uh, and hc stands for heretical structuring pam stands for par uh, partitioning clustering here whatever result they get it here and then they have also they fed the same same data to lstm with variational auto, auto encoder I already explained you what is variational autoencoder and LSTM because of the time limits. Uh, yeah, I do not. I do not have. I mean, I, I have to finish this presentation soon, so that's why I have not explained this particular LSTM. But this is time series data analysis. For that, they use uh, LSTM, and his, here these particular samples, these are time dependent. So what they have done that they have collected the sample on, for example, on first day, third day, fourth day. So these are time dependent data, right? So that's what they have used. They have got, uh, they have used LSTM with variational autoencoder. And third approach is our paper approach, deep convolutional embedded clustering. 
uh, and they have tra they have uh, trained their model and they converge their model till false discovery rate is less than 0 0.05 and here we can see that our model they can it can actually find more pathways as com as compared to other model why more pathways better so for example I eat the food and it digests so this is one pathway right but this particular model it can find more pathways so first first I ate and then it goes to some other veins and something like that it could make it could uh, recognize more pathways and here we can see that our model it is as better as compared to other models so yeah this this is the one particular application multiomics yeah that's it <laughs> that, that, that's it for, for 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 this session for this video yeah thank you very much uh, yeah I, I saw that uh, I could not find any video on this particular topic so that's why I thought that okay why not make one <laughs> so yeah thank you very much for your time and yeah see you next time